<laughs> hey, 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 everybody. It is Peter here from Strong Healthy Women and welcome to the Success Story Series. And today I am interviewing the lovely Sally Ann, who is actually from Strong Healthy Women, but she has a really, um, I think, inspiring story to share. And I know that we all have great stories to share um, with one another. And there may be some snippet of something that you uh, glean from today that might help you make that first step or many steps towards uh, better health and uh, well-being and fitness in your life. So welcome, Sally Ann. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm very good, thank you. Awesome, you? awesome. Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, no, I'm really well, thank you, thank you. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about uh, moving into today was I had uh, typed in a recently turned 50-year-old and I had this realisation that you're very soon going to be 51. Yes, I'm going to be 51. But I'm not um, as, and I'm, it, not as, I'm not as no. overwhelmed by that as I was turning 50. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And so I was thinking about how it appears that that time in itself has gone so so quickly. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, time is time, and it doesn't it doesn't alter. And there are many people who find the time to exercise and eat healthy and to take care of themselves. And there are those who say they don't have the time and yet those who are doing it have as much time as what those who are saying that they don't have. So let's wind back the clock a bit, a bit Sal, for you. Um, yes. You hit almost 100 kilos. Like what was your, what was your number? What was that catalyst? What was that turning mm -hmm. point for you? My number was 96 kilos and that mm -hmm. was, 96. They, weighed, they weighed me the day my daughter was born and I was mortified. Okay. Was my husband at the time who played football. Yep. Um, and I remember the family took a photo and yeah. I looked at the photo and it just did not even, even resemble me at all. It mm. was just. Mm. huge and then my mum took me another photo because I had a cesarean when I had my youngest daughter so she's just turned 16 in January and so I was mm -hmm. having a cesarean and my mum took a photo of me and you could literally just see yes. the eyes above my belly it was just I was huge I was huge mm. it's interesting you say that because I so sorry go on no, I was just going to say, um, and it was when that photo was pulled out a couple of weeks later, maybe a couple of months later, that, you know, that's when it sort of hit me. But go on. Mm. Yeah, no, a photo tells a thousand words, doesn't it? Um, and yeah. I know that we avoid the mirrors when we're feeling uncomfortable. We avoid looking at ourselves when we when we do feel uncomfortable. And But that can be that very thing that, we look at and go, uh, this is the time, this is the thing, I'm just going to start no matter what, I'm just going to do something. It's funny that you had mentioned um, that someone took a photo of you when you were pregnant with Olivia. Um, and I must say, for those who don't know me or my history, I had twin boys and so... I put on close to three stone. Now, don't ask me what that is in kilos and I can't equate to it. But I was massive and, you know, had boobs to match. <laughs> so, um, but I just, yes, yeah, so, you know, I could use them to sit my dinner plate on. They were so big. But I never, I never really, uh, if, I, I felt so bad in myself, just really, really bad in myself, that if anyone came anywhere near me with a camera, there was no way. There are no photos of me at the end of that pregnancy, none whatsoever, because it was like, no, we're not having any of those photos around. 
So, yeah. but in hindsight, I probably should have had one. <laughs> so. This photo was taken literally an hour before I was taken down to give birth. Oh dear. All right. You know, so, so that, that's a really, so, really, that was really impactful for me. Okay. Yeah. And then, so you've had Olivia and children being children. Um, she's going to be taking up a lot of time. Plus you had two other kids at home. And so what did you start doing? Like how did you juggle that whole situation of family life and trying to make some type of change? So Olivia was two weeks old when Quinn mm -hmm. started primary school. <clears throat> Georgia was starting to go to daycare. So at that point I had that extra time because I didn't have you know, they, they, they were at school and they were at daycare. And so I had a little Yeah, okay. Time. And it was, uh, and I saw an ad for Weight Watchers. And mm -hmm. I'm going to go okay. back to Weight Watchers because. Yeah, for sure. There's, there's something, yeah. So I saw an ad for Weight Watchers and I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. So I went along with a friend uh, to the hall and you check in and you get your, your books with the numbers and you count your food and all that sort of stuff. And it was, that was my starting point. So I thought, okay, my food, mm -hmm. I need to watch my food. I wasn't exercising when I started doing this. Mm -hmm. um, and Olivia would have been eight months old and we moved up north out to Mount Isa. Okay. So mm -hmm. up there, there was no Weight Watchers. It was, you had to go it alone. And I thought, okay, well, I've got mm -hmm. my books. I can do this. And... I thought, okay, we only had one car between us because my husband was mm -hmm. working at the time was working in the mines and he would take the car if he was on night shift, so one car between us. So it was okay, well, I have to walk the kids to school. And that's where yeah. it started. It started with the walking. Um, mm -hmm. And during that time, the one part, because we lived on both sides of Mount Isa, one part was flat. Then when we moved yeah. to the next... The other side of Mount Isa, the area that I was living in, was hilly. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I'm, <laughs> 90, I'm probably, maybe I've lost two, three kilos by this stage, four kilos, so seven, okay. kilos, yeah. Pushing a pram with a baby in it. And I thought, I have mm -hmm. to do these hills. I'm just going to do these hills. And mm -hmm. I started off like with one or two, you know one two three streets just going up and down the hills for maybe 20 minutes and right. then it slowly progressed from there it was I would walk for an hour and I was watching my food and at that stage the weight was starting to come off and people were commenting mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. my self-esteem was coming up I wasn't this big ginormous house anymore um you mm -hmm. know if anyone knows my family, Peter knows my sisters, she knows my family, we're always mm -hmm. having a deal with each other. So when I was pregnant with Olivia towards the end, the joke was that I had my own postcode because that's how big mm. I was. Terrible. Compared to what, mm. Yeah, but compared to what mm. people were used to seeing me look like, you know, I'm only 5'1", yeah. 5'2", and a um, bit before I started having children, I was only 56 kilo. So when you go yeah. from 56 kilo and then, you you know, for my family seeing me at that 96 kilos mm. prior to me giving mm -hmm. birth to my child, yes, I was pregnant, yes, I was giving birth. Um, yeah. That's, 40, you know, 40 kilos. I hadn't grown any taller. I was still this short person, so everything was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. So it was wonderful at that stage when those kilos were coming off and yes. that, that walking had kicked in so it was moving quick, quicker um, and the compliments started coming in. There, there's a really good, good lesson in what you've just said there, Sel, um, and it is the fact that it wasn't just walking. So, no. and this is the thing that I always say about walking um, is that it is great for us physically and particularly mentally, but it's not really 
a workout, you can turn it into a workout and you've turned it into a workout. Number one, you've turned it into a strength workout and number two, you turned it into an endurance workout because you're pushing a pram. So you got weight, you got resistance there. And then the yes. second thing that you've added is those heels. So your heart rate had to be pounding. Oh, so, you know, and yeah, and they're two critical factors in our in our health, in our fitness is to do endurance training and to do strength training. And the third one, of course, as you know, is, is flexibility as well too. So and I'm sure you were getting plenty of stretching, getting up and down off, off the ground with kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I'm sure. And so, and that gave you, did it give you the momentum to keep going? Absolutely. We were in yep. uh, Mount Isa for 14 months. Um, mm -hmm. And keeping in mind at that point, I hadn't found strength training. Yes. So, you know, I was just starting out and, you know, 19, 20 year old, I was going to the gym doing the aerobics and, you know, this is when Step First came out and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But when I gave birth to Olivia, you know, in that first year, second year, I was 36, 37 years old. So my knowledge yeah. was walking. And I knew you had to add yeah. heels in. Yeah, so I added my heels in. Um, we stayed with Mount Isa for 14 months. Um, that was all I was doing, my Weight Watchers, doing my walking with the heels and all that sort of thing, taking my walk longer. So if I needed milk yeah. from the, the supermarket, I would walk into town with Olivia rather than taking mm -hmm. the car. I did have the car. Yeah. We then moved down to Maclay Island. Yes. And once again, nowhere for strength training. So it would be oh, Olivia and I would walk the kids to school. School was in the middle of the island, so I'd walk the kids to the school. I'd walk to the other end of the island and then walk home because we were on one, mm. one end and you could walk. I think it was like 5Ks down one end of the island and then 5Ks back. Um, right. And so that, that's, that's what I would do. And... I was still probably not following the Weight Watchers program to the T, but I now had the knowledge of what was healthy, what was best for me, and what wasn't. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting that you say that you hadn't started strength training. I would probably you know disagree with that because um i really because you are pushing that pram and you know dragging those kids around there is strength associated with that because there's a you know you think about the average little little person you know they're 10 kilos plus type of things so there is there's a lot of strength work going on and i think intuitively for you and this is the thing about women in general we do have great intuition you know so you knew it. So even though it wasn't something formalised in in a, a gym or anything like that, yeah. you knew that it was something that you needed. Yeah. Yes. Or your body yeah. knew, and it and yeah. and you were following through on it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So did you just stick with Weight Watchers over the years, or have you? Um, I believe you've done some other things as well too. I've done other programs. When we moved, we mm -hmm. were on Clay Island, I think about 10 months, and we moved back to Ipswich. And mm -hmm. my, I think about that time it was a plateau. I was plateauing. And I was like, okay, yeah. I don't, I don't want to kickstart this again. Um, and my brother-in-law, Mark, had done uh, The Natural Way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they had all different programs on the natural way and I was talking to him about that and I thought, okay, well, I'll give that, I'm going to try this and see what this one's mm -hmm. like. Um, and so I started doing the natural natural way. Um, and at that stage too, I wasn't just walking, I was interval running. So yeah. my time out, outside without the kids was for an hour and in that mm -hmm. time, 
I would have stretches of my walk that would be a run. So I would pick, you know, okay, I'm going to start at the next power pole and run for five power poles. Or there might be yeah. a hill and I'm going to run half the hill and walk the rest of the hill, rest of the hill or walk mm. half the hill and then must run the rest of the hill. Um, running downhill. So I was breaking up that interval walk and my heart yeah. rate was going up and down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think too. Mm -hmm. it, it, I think my body had said, "Okay, well, walking's not enough now. I needed something extra." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, j just thinking about that whole process for you, Cell. You start something. What kept you going? So it, it, it doesn't matter what it was, you know, and for many of us, we either get bored with it or um, life jumps in the road and then something else becomes a priority. And so whatever we're doing um, stops. And so how did, did you have those situations and, and how did you overcome those? Um, I did have those situations, you know. I think one of the yeah. major things that happened for me was two major things, actually. Um, I was running and mm -hmm. saw a rock and said to myself, don't step on the rock, but stepped on the rock. <laughs> <laughs> what you focus on, you do. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I tore yes. ligaments and tendons in my ankles. In my ankle yes. and that was about okay. six weeks not being able to do anything um but mm -hmm. in saying that not being able to do anything was not being able to go for a run or do my interval walk or run at this stage yep. i had gotten into the gym so i was doing strength training so i knew i could still right okay do the strength training because i was at our local gym most of the machines are cable machines with seats, so I could sit, I could hobble upstairs, upstairs mm -hmm. into the women's gym and, and do my strength training. The second mm. one was that really impacted me was um, an accident in the backyard. Quinn and I were mowing in the backyard. He was mowing, I was weaving. <laughs> <laughs> and he mowed over this ball and it was, it's like one of those massage <laughs> balls. And it's flung out and hit me in the calves. Um, mm -hmm, and that was mm -hmm. five weeks on crutches. And that yes. was hard, really hard. And I think, well, I don't think my mindset went downhill because I couldn't do okay. anything. I couldn't even, you know, I couldn't drive to the gym. I couldn't do anything. Now, in saying that and saying that mm -hmm. now, Mm -hmm. Sounds ridiculous because I know the <laughs> stuff that I can still do. You know, keep yes. in mind, ladies. At this at this point in time, Peter and I hadn't connected, so I hadn't. I was doing strength training. I was gaining the knowledge in strength training, but I hadn't done my cert in PT as yet. So, mm -hmm. knowing what I know now, I would have got off my butt mm -hmm. back then and mm -hmm. said to someone, "Get me to the gym." <laughs> You know, yeah. Um, but instead, yeah. I was feeling sorry for myself because I was on mm -hmm. crutches. You know, for two weeks I couldn't get upstairs. I had to sleep on the couch. Sleep on the lounge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that yeah. can be devastating. You know, you're not eating properly, and I say you're not eating properly because you could be in. You know, I was in pain, so it was, I wasn't hungry. Um, and then when I did get hungry, yeah. it wasn't a proper meal time, so it was probably not a proper meal that I was having. Yeah, okay. and I was letting all okay. that into fear. Yeah. Okay, so you've had these moments where life has stopped you in your tracks. Yes. yes. Okay, and you're sitting on the couch feeling sorry for yourself. Yes. Um, and eventually you can get off those crutches and you can start moving was it just an automatic switch that you went just straight back to it or was it uh this 
oh no, stay on the couch, oh no, get off the couch, oh, stay on the couch, you know. So was there a little bit of a mind game going on for you and Absolutely. how did you overcome that? Absolutely, yep. it was a mind game. And every day it was, um, it was just a get up and do it. Didn't want to do it. Right. Would rather sit on the couch. Um, mm -hmm. But it was get up and do it. And that got me back into that routine. I think that's probably what was the struggle as well, was my routine was gone. But, you know, because it yeah. was 4 o'clock I was going for my walk or run, you know, um, coming home I would either then go to the gym or it would be come home, get dinner ready, get the kids ready, go to the gym at 7 o'clock and I'd be home 8.30, 9 o'clock. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that routine was upset and I had to get myself back into that routine. So was it just, did it take like a, a, a day of this, uh, okay, get up and do something or was it that you just, was there something, um, some trigger, something in your house that you did um, that really got you to, as you said, you've just done it. So what was it, you know, because we, we can all, all say to ourselves, um, I'm going to I'm going to go to, to I'm going to go and work out at you know nine o'clock today and nine o'clock rolls by and we don't do it. So there was something that helped get you just to do it. So do you recall what that was? Being uncomfortable. I was starting to become okay. uncomfortable when I was ninety six kilos. You know, it was a struggle yeah. to get my shoes on, if they even fit. Um, you waddled, right. I waddled everywhere. Um, you know, you couldn't bend over, couldn't cross my legs, those sort of things. Okay. And I didn't get to that point after my accident, but I was starting to feel that uncomfortableness. And I didn't okay. want to be to that point of where I was when I started my journey, yeah. That, that okay, so creeping in. Yeah, okay, so that makes sense. So, what you were recalling was that time in your life where you felt so, so uncomfortable in what you couldn't do or and yeah. how you felt in yourself that you didn't want to have, you know, go back to that again and you were starting yeah. to see those warning signs coming into your daily life this is a really interesting thing because so for uh many of us we skirt around the outside of of how we feel we don't acknowledge how we feel um yeah. or it's there but we don't actually dig deep into that feeling and so we will continue to ignore it. It's like when, um, you know, we start to feel that little bit of extra something, something coming on, you know, around that tummy area as an example. Um, you feel it, but you ignore it. And, but there'll be some point maybe when you pull on, you know, you, it, it's winter time, and maybe you put, go to pull on a pair of jeans and those jeans just, mm, no, that's not going to work or... I'm going to have to loosen up that button if I want to eat um, moment might happen and then you go, okay, this is just really, really uncomfortable, you know, and, and then you can go the other way as well too, can't you? Because you can say to yourself, I'll just go and buy another pair of jeans yeah. <laughs> and I'll just, yeah. I'll just have a, you know, a smaller cupboard and a bigger cupboard type of thing. And, like, I've seen that on many occasions. So... Um, and I didn't want to do was that something because that pushed you. Yeah, mm. I didn't want to do that because I worked hard to buy the clothes that I bought when I lost all the weight, when I lost the forty kilos. Right. You know, I mm. worked, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about a job. I worked hard on myself, and yes. 
you don't I looked at them and I thought I'm not going to waste them like I worked hard to get in them and get to wear what I wanted to wear yeah I need to remember that feeling of being uncomfortable and having to wear those bigger clothes mm, mm. and how not sad I was but you know yeah look and and the other thing is like life is is a roller coaster as well too isn't it um where we have those moments of ups and downs um and that's where relying on as you mentioned earlier some type of routine or daily practice that keeps us going so we we naturally just do it as opposed to having to force ourselves to do yeah. something in particular as well too. Yeah. So what do you think has been the biggest lesson for you in this whole process that you've gone through? The two biggest lessons for me is that, okay. and I'm going to go back to the Weight Watchers and the other program that I did. Mm-hmm. There was six years, six years, three, three, four, three to four years difference between the Weight Watchers and the other program that we did. Yeah. <clears throat> so I understood that my body wasn't responding to the first program. So mm -hmm. I was looking for what will it respond to next. So as yeah, we okay. age, it's different things are what, there are going to be different things that our body needs you know what i did mm -hmm. when i was 36 is not going will probably not help me now it may very well but it may not so i think you've mm. got to find find what's going to help you the other thing too is knowledge you know as i said when i was in mount isa didn't know what strength training was. You know, I knew, you know, there's weights, but weights were, you know, in the gym, using barbells, muscles everywhere, that sort of mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. When I started doing the strength training, I was buying magazines on it and not magazines about bodybuilding. I was buying magazines about women's fitness and mm -hmm. Um, women's muscle building and that sort of thing because I wanted to learn what I was doing, why I was doing what I was doing, um, what I could improve on, what could I change. Yeah, okay. So I wasn't just doing the same thing over and over again because, you know, after six years that what I was doing when I was 36 wasn't working when I was 42 or 46. And I think yes. that it's, a, yeah. it's evolving all the time. It doesn't matter what fitness you're doing, what you're doing. You have to make sure that it evolves all the time. Yeah, adjust to where your body is right at that point. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you start strength training at the gym. Why strength training? Why'd you pick it? Like, so you're talking about one of the lessons was knowledge, but you had to have, there was something there that you went, oh, no, nope, that's what I'm going to do. That That's the type of workout that I want. Um, it sounds funny, but it was my body. My body felt that it needed more than the, the interval walking and running that I was doing. I wanted to do more. And I thought, hmm. I might start lifting weights. I haven't done that before. And, you know, I went in, had no idea what I was doing, you know, you have, I think you yeah, had okay. one sort of, you know, quick Lesson. tour of the gym. <laughs> yeah, here you go, use yeah. this machine. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I was mm -hmm. determined to learn um, and understand the machines and understand the muscles that I were working, you know. So they had little stickers on each machine on where you work, what muscles you were working and where you are working. And right. so I would be feeding yes. those stickers and those sort of things. Um, but I was just drawn to the strength training rather than going into a, you know, an aerobics class or a step class or something like that. 
Could that be something? Now, I actually know you, so um, I'm, I'm just going to jump in here. Do you think that, that the reason that you didn't want to go to, like, the other things, which is the aerobic-style classes back in that day, <laughs> was the fact that it required some level of coordinate coordination <laughs> and and your and in your mind and this is your your mind uh, your mind you think you're not coordinated would that be yeah. right do you yeah, think that's right. why you got okay i need something that i i don't have to respond to you know turn left turn right and very quickly um and and uh, move into that so therefore um, that's one aspect. I think so. Would that be wrong? You think? Yeah, I I think so. Yes, that mm -hmm. would be one part of it. But mm -hmm. I think the other part is too that doing the strength training allowed me to learn at my pace. So yes. my mindset is is when you're going into group fitness, I've got to keep up with everybody, and I've got to know all the moves. And oh my goodness, you know, um, you know, yeah, even okay. now I'll go and do my sister's step class, and you know. She'll, I did it a few weeks ago. I went in and did her step class because my sister's a trainer as well and she teaches step. Yeah. And I went in and did her step class and halfway through the class I'm just standing on the step and she, you know, being the sister, she's allowed to yell at me and she's going, Sally Ann, what are you doing? And I've just looked at her and I went, clearly nothing because I don't know what to do. <laughs> but with the, with the strength training in the gym, I was in control and it was, I was learning at my pace. Mm, okay, I, I like that too. Uh, the other thing that I thought of there in regards to strength was were you feeling a little weaker, maybe mentally or physically, and that's why you felt that the strength training was something that, would help you build that I think in your body? Um, probably more mentally. I don't okay. think physically, mentally I was mm -hmm. looking for more, um, mm. a little bit more stimulation probably. Um, and I just found that with strength training, you know, it's mm. I just put my music on and I go in. And the one thing I do when I do strength train is, I like to connect my mind with my body and with my muscles. Yeah, absolutely. So I you have like to. that. Yeah. And I like that mm. feeling of putting my earphones in, turning my music on, you know, yeah. counting my reps, doing my sets and feeling it in my muscles. And I think with going into the gym with the strength training rather than going and doing the group fitness, I was getting that when I was doing like when I do my strength training, so it's a yeah, it's more yeah. mind body connect, yeah, yeah. Um, I and I do like the fact that you said gain the knowledge, um, but there's that second part to it as well too. Not only do you want to gain the knowledge, you want to take action, and you want to know that what you're moving into is going to be right for you, right for your body. Um, I mean, you and I both know that strength training is uh, a critical factor, is the factor, yeah. you know, um, to the ageing body. And that's what we do at Strong Healthy Women. Um, but, you know, for many women, they steer clear of that strength training um you know they'll go and do the walking as you said and that's a great place to start and I'm never going to knock it um because I love walking as well too um but they'll also go and do you know a, a day of yoga or a day of pilates or something but it's not the same you need that you need that impact of the the weights what the weights are going to give you to build your muscles to build strong bones and you know, that being strong means that you are less likely to fall as you age. So there's so many benefits to it. So you had this natural intuition in yourself younger that you 
are listening to your body and what your body actually is telling you. And it's really yeah. interesting so far in all of the women that I've interviewed in this, and it's one of the things that I personally, you know, the lesson that I, the biggest lesson for me is to listen to your body. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, that that is just the one thing that's coming through in every time that we have these uh, wonderful chats with everyone. Is there any piece of advice that you would like to leave us with before you get going today? One thing I will say is we're talking about strength training and I love strength training, as, you know, we've just discussed that. <laughs> um don't be don't be scared we've spoken about knowledge as well so get that knowledge don't be scared to strength train strength training isn't about going into the gym and lifting barbells and you know 50 kilo weights no. and that, it, it, that's not what strength training is is about and that's not what mm. strength training has to be for women it is Going in there, going in, going to Kmart and buying a two kilo set of weights, a three kilo set of weights. Yeah. And just mm -hmm. starting small um, and listening to your body because once you get through those three kilo weights, your body's going to want more. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I mean, that's one of the wonderful things that we've actually recently seen, you know, in the past 12 months in the virtual studio now. Uh, women who we were working with face to face, you know, n not moving up to higher weights, they would just stay on the weights that they were at. Um, but when they actually started to really focus on themselves and listen to that mind and body connection, that two way street, they've actually they're moving up in weights, you know. Um, yeah. And Christine is one of those women that you know I think of straight away you know one day I'm sitting there looking at the screen you know and I'm going Christine they're bigger weights than what you normally do yeah I went and got my sons so she dropped yeah. she jumped two kilos both sides so that's four kilos just in one go mm -hmm. um yeah because she was more focused on herself and that's one of the things that I actually love about, you know, working out at home but working out with other people because you're in, in this virtual studio uh, because you are more focused on yourself than chatting with everybody else around you. Yeah. So not yeah. that there's anything wrong with chatting. There's a place for no. chatting as well. Yeah. But yeah. you're focused on yourself and you're doing the work, yeah. Mm, yeah, totally, totally. Look, Sal, I love that story. Do you happen to know um, that 96 kilos? Do you happen to know what that was in pounds or stones? Oh, no, I don't. I don't okay. No, I it's, don't. it's usually about, it's usually double, isn't it, around about? I'll just have a look. I think it's about double. So it's probably about 200 so it's probably around 180, 190 pound. 211 pounds. Holy moly. There you, there you go. go. And what's that in stone? <laughs> what's that in stone? 211. I know. We like kilos. Kilos are half. <laughs> so what's that in stone? I'm going to have a look at that. <laughs> There you go, 15 stone. <laughs> 15 stone, yeah, okay. That's, that's, yeah, some that's numbers. definitely up there. <laughs> yeah, some numbers to finish off on. So, ladies, I um, I really, really uh, love the time that we've spent with Sally Ann today. Um, you, you know, it just shows that it doesn't matter whether you're 200 pound or, you know, 96 kilos. Um, you can make changes. You can start taking those steps. And it is, I think, about listening to that intuition that we all have. And and I, that's what I've got out of Sally Ann's story. So I would love for you to share below and tell me what you've got out of her story as well. Thank you, Sal, so much for being here and sharing those little snippets of your life. And I know that there's many other aspects 
um, <laughs> that you could definitely share. Um, but they were just some of the highlights of, you know, how you got to where you are and how you continue to work forward in your life. So thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having Big me. Big love. I will. I will pull the photo out of me when I was 96 kilos and I'll post it in the comments too. Oh, please do. Yeah, that would be lovely. Okay. All right. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you all soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Peter. Bye, self. Bye. Thank you.